Hi everyone, welcome to Rocket Rose Art. My name is Jeff, and I hope you're all well out there. In this video, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about things, and I have an interesting piece here that um, I'll show you in a bit more detail shortly, but hopefully we'll still get a nice stone out of it. So today, I've got a fairly interesting piece here, and I want to show you the different uh, factors that I look at when deciding how I want to cut the piece. So I'll get to that in a minute, then we'll get into cutting, and at the end, I'll summarise anything that may have happened during the cutting, and I'll show you some photos that uh, will give you an idea of how it will look in some jewellery. So uh, stick around to the end. So this here is the piece. At the moment this is as it comes out of the saw. So you can't really look into it too deeply. But if I wet this you can see that changes quite dramatically. It's this this is a bicolour, so it's got a uh, really nice blue and quite a good um, sort of orangey structure with some green pieces. Now, unfortunately, part of it was lost up here. With all of this, it would probably, you know, be best cut as a uh, cushion shape, which is uh, more, more or less square or rectangular. But if I do that, you can see... I'm going to lose all that side there or I'm going to lose the top of it so that's not a good thing to do given the shape of it I think the best cut is still an oval now there are a few factors um, to look at here um, I always sort of look in the side of it if you look in the side of these things you can see the the structure in there a bit and you can see as I rotate this around the black base um, comes up a little bit and on this side it comes right up but if you if you look closely you can see it doesn't go in very deep so I believe that as I roll over the oval that that will um, disappear quite a lot and as we come around here you can see it's up there a bit it does come up on this side but I don't think that's going to be a big problem um, there's a little flaw in there. Again, I don't think it's going to be a big problem, but we'll find out when we get into the cutting. Um, it's got some really nice blue up here, so the oval, I'm going to try and keep as much of that as possible in the oval and uh, keep as much of the colour and sort of just lose bits on the corner here. I don't see any bubbles in there that uh, these little chips will they'll, they'll be taken out. I don't see any major bubbles in there. There are probably small ones, but um, yeah, they're just a fact of life with this material. Okay, we'll get into the cutting and see how we go. Before I get into cutting the stone, please subscribe. That would be appreciated. And um, if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you think somebody out there can benefit from it, uh, please share it. I'd appreciate that. And don't forget to turn on the notifications. The first thing I'm going to do here is um, try to mark out a guide for the oval. So I've just used this template to find the oval that best fits the piece. And with a um, aluminium pen that I made up just out of some aluminium, I'm going to try and mark the surface. Right, we'll see how that goes. Sorry if my fingers get in the way. The reason I'm using the aluminium is because um, when I get under the water, any just about anything else just disappears. So you can see there, it's uh, marked it up as an oval. Now that's not necessarily the final shape, that's just as a guide um, 
to get to, you know, for me so that I know where I'm going. It's actually a little bit to one side. So um, that's all right. We can adjust for that. Um, so now we'll just uh, dop up the stone. Um, there is a video on this and I'll put the link up the top for it. So it's just a matter of warm up the stone. Warm up the wax. And center it on the stone. And as I show in the other video, just make sure it's centered on the stone. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to cut a nice uniform stone. That's about it. So the first thing here, I'm on the 360 wheel by the way, so the first thing here is to uh, rock out the stone and uh, get it as close as we can to the final shape. Right. And I try very hard to not take too much material away. I need just a little bit more water on there. Is, uh, yeah, I don't want to take out too much of the material, so I'm going to take it reasonably s slow here. Keep checking my piece as I go through. And remember, the, uh, the mark I put on is only a guide. If this was a calibrated size, which means that it's got to fit a standard bezel, then I would have to make it exactly right. But um, this is a bit more freeform. And I'm doing it here rather than over on the um, the uh, flat lap, simply because there's not so much material to take away. Okay. Um, you can see how that aluminium mark lasts a lot longer than anything like a texture. Obviously it will eventually disappear. Just checking the sides to see if anything's showing up, like some bubbles have come through or anything like that. Now you can see that it's a little high on one side, I'll try and take some of that down. I 
I think it's going to be a very nice cab. Okay. I'll just rough in the roll, the roll on the, um, the edges. doing one of these the other day and I hadn't attached the wax as well as it should have been. It flew off, hit the bottom and literally just shattered. This is a bit of a shame. So when you're dopping up make sure you get it as, um, as good as possible. See how that black, see that black side there is slowly coming out. I think our um, oval can be a little bit better. I think that's close enough I can go over on the finer wheel now and uh, refine that shape a lot better. So we're over on the 600 now. <coughs> I'll, uh, excuse me, losing my voice. We'll uh, try and get that shape just a little bit better. Trying to take out the um, flat sides, basically. Um, trying to get a bit slightly more pleasing shape. Um, a little tricky doing this when the pattern is to one side because it makes it look irregular it's actually not okay now we'll just go around and um, Roll this over. Mm. Just need to get that angle a little bit more.
probably should have done this on the um, 360 wheel, but hey, I'm an old bloke and I forget. That's looking better. Okay. spot there. Prefer to have it as flat as possible on the top before I try and do that final roll. And I'm not going to make this a, um, well I'll see. I'm thinking I probably don't want to make this a full roll. So I don't want to take out too much of the um, colour. We'll see how it goes. Get that smooth out so it all looks kind and a little difficult today with that band aid on there. Um, it's got nothing to do with uh, cutting stones, by the way. It's not like I've hacked up my finger or something. I can get away with a little bit here because I am polishing, polishing this in the kiln and which tends to um, smooth it out a bit better. If I was uh, polishing this in cerium obviously I would have to be a lot more picky about my final shaping. Oh by the way I have been asked why I polish in the kiln. Um, in an earlier video I explained I don't have all the fine wheels um, to do this to take it through and uh, polish on cerium so um, I have to polish in the kiln this material will actually melt fully in the kiln so um, I have to be careful about what I do Just touch up that shape a little bit Now, is that looking good? I think it's looking pretty good. What do you reckon? Set out quite a nice stone. The blue is still going to... Um, appear in it there. Maybe it's not as going to be as bright as I thought. Um, but we've still got that nice structure about it. And 
I think that is ready for the kiln. So this is my kiln and there is that poor lonely stone sitting there all on its own. Well, it's the next day. The cabochon is out of the kiln and I think it looks really good. Um, didn't have any big surprises during cutting. Um, small bubble on the side, but that's fine. That's just par for the course with this material to get a slight bubble, but it is on the side and you won't really be able to see it once it's set in jewelry. Um, you can see here that the blue is slightly darker um, but when you polish in a kiln, the colours do shift a little towards the blue end of the spectrum, so things do get a little darker. If you polish this on cerium, um, it would stay more true to what you see before you cut it. Now here are a couple of examples of how this would look in jewellery. Obviously, it depends upon whether you use a bezel or a prong setting or you wire wrap it or um, you know maybe even glue it straight to a bale. Now talking about value of this I have been asked to give some indication of value. The problem with valuing something like this is the cost of the rough is um, fairly cheap compared to normal gemstones it is more the cost of your time. How do you value your time? And that will depend upon whether you're just a hobbyist and you do this for a bit of fun and you're looking to uh, recoup costs to keep yourself going, or whether you're in business selling jewelry. Obviously, if you're in business, um, you will have a markup of some sort. Whereas if you're just a hobbyist, you just want to get a bit back for your time, cover the material costs and obviously running your equipment and so forth. Me. I'm a bit more like a hobbyist. I don't run this as a large business. I sm sell a small amount of rough, and maybe one day I will also sell the cabochons. Um, my wife sells the jewellery that she makes, but again, we're not in it to make huge profits. So this stone, given that it's turned out a little dark, um, not quite as, as um, bright and um, colourful as I was hoping, I would probably value between $25 and $30 when I put it into a piece of jewellery. And then the final price on the jewellery, of course, depends entirely upon how you design, what sort of materials you make the jewellery out of. Finally, um, if you want to buy some of this rough, there is a link in the description for buying it. Not a great deal up there at the point of making this video, but I do hope to get more up there um, over time. And um, remember, uh, sus uh, subscribe um, if you want to see more of these videos. Um, like it if you, if you, only if you like it, of course, and share it with somebody um, if you think it can help them. And that's about it for this one. Um, I will see you in the next video, so bye for now.